Hey everybody, I'm trying to get this hair out of my mouth, sorry. There you go. Yeah. Hi everybody. Um, I have to go out of town today, but before I go, I want to make sure I give some good word and give you guys something to eat on because I won't really be posting because I'll be driving. So, good morning, good morning, good morning. Everybody jump on in, especially why I got good connection. <laughs> Welcome up. Good morning. Another day above the ground and not beneath. Good morning, good morning, good morning. <clears throat> hey, everybody. I pray you guys slept well. Okay. Good morning. I'm good. How are you? Oh. You're one day closer. <laughs> Hi, I don't receive that one. Are you doing any song requests? No. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not like any other live people. I just give you what God tell you and tell me and then I get off. So, yeah, no. I don't take requests. So, um, <laughs> good morning. But... I do have some good word for you guys. Um, I am getting ready to get on the road, so I want to make sure I go live and give you guys some substance for today because I probably won't be on until a little bit later. But God led me to this. Hi. God led me to this last night. I couldn't go to sleep until I wrote this down. And then I woke up because I had a plethora of dreams last night. But I'm going to do a video about that later. But um, he led me into Acts. So if you guys want to turn to um, Acts, and I'm going to be in a 12th chapter. Um, so I'm going to be in 12. And I really feel like I'm going to read all of 12. Just to give you guys some substance. Um, some substance to it. Or whatever. Um, so we're going to be in Acts 12. And it talks about um, Peter. If you're not familiar with Acts. It's, oh my gosh. Acts is one of my favorite chapters. So um, if we want to go to Acts, it's going to be talking about Peter and how he was in prison and um, how King, um, how Herod wanted to actually have him killed. But God told me to title this Plot Twist. So we're going to be in Acts 12 and we're going to call this Plot Twist, right? So I'm going to go ahead and start reading really quick and then I have a summation of it. So here we go. It's okay. What is it, baby? Take that to Jodo. He can cut it off. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go. So, Acts 12. Good morning. Acts 12. And uh, we're going to start with one. About that time, Herod the king laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And when he saw it was it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. Um, this was during the days of unleavened bread. And when he had seized him, he put him in prison, delivering him over to the four squads of the soldiers to guard him, intending after the Passover to bring him out to the people. So Peter was kept in prison, but earnest prayer for him was made um, to God by the church. So the church was actually praying. So King Herod pretty much was out just killing disciples. And he killed his brother, and he was like, I'm going to kill you later. It was like he got a little bit, and he was going to kill a little bit later, right? And so... Um, after they was finna eat and all that stuff, the next day he was going to do a public display of how he was going to end up killing Peter. If you know Peter, he's a very powerful prophet, um, um, disciple, and they call him the rock, right? So here we go on six. Now, when Herod was about to bring him out on that very night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and centuries before him, before the door were guarding the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood next to him. And a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, Dress yourself and put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, Wrap your, wrap your um, cloak around, me, around you and follow me. And he went out and he followed him. And he did not know that he was being done by an angel was real. But the but thought he was seeing a vision. So he thought he was sleeping while all of this is happening. So I'm going to stop right there for a second. 
Um, so Peter was in prison. They were ex about, to, about to execute him, right? So Peter was in prison thinking he was going to get executed. The angel of God came, woke him up, tapped him on his shoulder, literally. And he was like, get up. Like, I'm about to give you an exit plan. I know they're about to persecute you out there. I know they want you dead. I know you just seen your brother get killed. I know all of this. And I know you're like, where is God? Where is God? But while you were praying, the whole church was praying. And you would unlock God's door. So he is getting, he's doing everything that he was saying. Even in his sleep, he was being obedient. When God tells you something, it's time for you to move and move quickly. Like I tell you, hold God's hand and just take off running. Just take off running. Now, had he not been obedient, it would have been different. If he would have just been like, oh no, this can't really be nothing. This is nothing. No, no, no. He woke up quickly, grabbed his sandals, threw them on, grabbed the cloak, threw it on, and took off running. When God comes into your life, he's not going to come to play. He has a message for you. He wants you to move and move quickly because death could be at your door, but he going to show you a plot twist. He going to show you that he's fast than the devil he's gonna show the devil you thought you thought he was he was asleep and all while he's doing what he's doing putting his shoes on putting his clothes on and then taking off running he thought it was just a vision he thought he was dreaming he really didn't know what was going on for real for real listen 10 when they had passed the first and the second guard, they came to the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them on its own accord, and they were out and went along on one street, and immediately the angel left him. When Peter came to himself, he said, Now I'm sure that the Lord, that that was the Lord that sent the angel and rescued me from the hands of Herod and from all, the, all, all that the Jewish people were expecting. So as they were leaving out, they passed the first guard. They passed the second guard. And I can only imagine how Peter's heart was just racing. Like, are they going to catch us? Are they going to catch us? Like, we, we are we invisible? When God is for you, he will make you invisible to your enemies. They will come to persecute you. They will come to steal, kill, and destroy. But they can't find you. Listen, they were supposed to be guarding him. They were trained guardsmen. They were trained army people. You know, they were trained soldiers. And they couldn't even see the very prison that they, they were supposed to guard and supposed to be killing. God will make you invisible amongst the very people that's supposed to kill you. If God is for you, no one can be against you. He was able to walk in front of them and not even be seen. They're standing there with their iron swords, their bow and arrows, their armor um, gear, and they can't even see the prison that they were supposed to be watching. They can't even see the man they were supposed to be persecuting. Because when God is for you, baby, no one can be against you. He will make your enemies blind to you. And baby, when they got to the gate, they didn't even have to touch this iron secure gate. Baby, you know how many people it took to open those gates? It said the gate opened on its own accord. When God comes into your life, he doesn't even have to open the gate for you. The gates will start opening. The doors will start opening. When God opens a door for you, no man can close it. No man can open what God can open for you. Listen, baby, God will open that door. All God said was go to the gate and watch it do. The gate just opened. I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm an armed gate. I'm not supposed to be opening on my own. But God, if you said it, everything has to obey God. Everything has to obey God. The soldiers had to turn the blind eye and the gates had to open. Because when it's your open door season, baby, no one can stop it. When it's your open door season, baby, no one can stop it. The door can't even stand in your way. The door has to open on God's accord. No one can stand in your way when the door when it's open door season for you, baby. I don't care how big the door is. I don't care how secure the door is. When God is for you, that door has to open. I don't care how many years you've been in the back. God says when it's time for you to come to the front, baby, you come and to the front. I don't care. God says when it's your time, it's your time. When it's your time, it's your time. And can nobody stop you? Can nobody stop you? Baby, the door just flew open for them. The guards just turned away like, oh, is that somebody? Did you feel a wind? Did you feel something? Was that a prisoner? No, it can't be. He in there sleeping. He know he about to get executed. They don't even know what's happening because God is in the silent. And while they minding their business, God's like, I got you. I got you. Don't worry about it. I heard your tears last night. Don't worry about it. I heard your prayers last night. Don't worry about it. I heard your grandma them prayers. Don't worry about it. I got you. And not only do I got you, I got an exit plan for you. I got a plot twist for your enemies. Don't worry about it. I got you. Listen, let me come over here. 12. 
When he realized this, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose other name was Mark, where, um, where many were gathered together and they were praying. And, they, and when he knocked at the door of the gateway, a servant girl named Rhonda came to answer, recognizing Peter's, Peter's voice in her, recognizing Peter's voice in her joy. She did not open the gate, but ran and reported that Peter was standing at the gate. <laughs> then said to her, they said to her, you are out of your mind. But she kept insisting that it was so. And she kept saying, it is, it is, an, it is his angel. But Peter continued knocking and when they opened and they saw it was him they were amazed but motioning to them that with his hand to be silent he described them to them how the lord had brought him out of the prison and he said tell these things to james and to his brothers then he departed and went to another place now let me stop right there so when he escaped out of all of that he ran to the house where they were all praying they're thinking they're still talking to god they, they rocking and shaking they're praying and they rocking they rocking and praying rocking and praying they're, they're they're doing sounds to heaven not knowing that god had already answered them god had already heard their prayers while they rocking and shaking and on their knees and they're telling god please don't let it let it him die they're thinking the angel is at the door with his voice they think he done went to the upper room and came back like jesus did and telling them like oh no but he's like no let me keep not because it's important because a knock is coming to the door saying God has delivered me don't you see let me give you my testimony see the test came but I got a testimony because I've overcame it open the door and let me tell you the goodness of God let me tell you how he delivered me let me tell you what he delivered me from let me tell you all the goodness open the door open the door I got a testimony I got to testify on God's behalf listen I am not an angel I am not a ghost I am in living flesh God has done this God has delivered me stop praying for a second and come to the door don't run and come back and open the door and when they opened the door he said be quiet because they still searching for me right now they got a search party out when they realized that a ghost didn't pass them it was really me in the flesh god just made me invisible for a moment god just made me invisible and he gave me access to access granted in my life he says open the door so when they opened the door and they was like this is him for real for real. let me touch you let me touch you he's like be quiet Go tell everybody what happened. I got to dip up out of here because they trying to come get me. The devil is really after me for real, for real. But God already done freed me. And if he freed me, they can't come get me. I just got to come back and give you my testimony. When I'm telling you guys, it's time to open up your mouth to the goodness that God has done for you. Because your soul story can save someone else's life. It might seem like nothing to you. But to God and everyone else that's out there fighting this battle that you're fighting secretly. It's big. It's time for you to tell your testimony because history is his story. But we need you to tell your story for a reason because can't nobody tell your story like you can tell it. They can write down in the books about you, but it won't be your testimony because he can tell you, oh, I was asleep, baby. I thought I was dreaming and somebody had to touch me on my shoulder and I heard him, but I was still groggy and my eyes was like, what? What are you saying? And I'm still getting a cold out of my eyes. I'm like, what are you saying? You said, get my shoes on. Hold on. You said my shoes. Okay, what? You said put my cloak on. What? Run. I don't know where we going, but I'm following you. I don't know where you going, God, but I'm following you. I don't know where you taking me, God, but I'm following you. I don't know your plans, but I'm following you. I heard you, God. I'm running, God. I don't know what you saying. Let me get the coals out my eyes while I'm running. Matter of fact, forget that. Let me go. God, we had a gate. The gate not open. What, what? The guard right there. God's like, don't worry about that. Keep running. Don't worry about that. Keep running. Don't worry about that. Keep running. I don't care what the people say about you. I don't care if they say you just like your mama. I don't care if they say you just like your daddy. I don't care that they talk about you a crackhead. I don't care that they say you depressed. I don't care about none of that didn't i say you free take off running take off running tell your story go to rehab get delivered come out and tell everybody rejoice and tell everybody the goodness that i have done for you get what i don't care god says it's takeoff season it's takeoff season can't nobody tell your story like you can tell your story can't nobody tell your story like you can tell your story i refuse to let somebody else tell my story i refuse to tell some let somebody else tell my story i'm gonna write it down i don't care if it's i was free i am free I am free. And if God set me free, baby, then I am free. But let me, I didn't even get to the plot twist yet. I ain't even get to the plot twist yet. Because hold on. When we come right here, we come right here and um, I stop right here. So I'm going to come to 20. 
Yeah, I am free. Go on, go on, put that in the comments real. I am free because God has set you free. And ain't nobody going to tell his story but you. You're going to tell your story. That's it. That's all. Ain't nobody going to tell what you've been through. Ain't nobody going to tell how you kicked depression. Ain't nobody going to tell how you kicked anxiety. Ain't nobody going to tell how you kicked addiction, how you kicked being lustful, how you kicked being being somebody's side piece and now you somebody wife and you somebody husband. Ain't nobody going to tell how you kick what you kick but you. Listen, you are free. And if God set you free, then you free and get, indeed. Who? Ain't nobody going to tell your story but you. After today, you going to tell your story. I don't care if you walk across the street and didn't get a jaywalk ticket. Baby, you going to tell that story. You're going to tell whatever story it is that frees you. I don't care if you're going to free. I don't care if you get free from a toxic relationship or a toxic job. I don't care if you get free from a, a, um, a pornography. Whatever it is, baby, you're free. You're free. Okay, let me get to this plot twist. Let me get to this plot twist real quick. So, in 20, verse 20. Now, Harad was angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, and they came to him um, with, um, with one accord. And having, um, pursue, uh, having persuaded Belias, the king of Chamberlain, they asked for peace because their country depended on the king's country for food. On an appointed day, Harad put on his royal, his royal robes, took his seat upon the throne, and delivered an, um, delivered an option to them. And the people um and the people were shouting the voice the voice of a god and not of a man immediately an angel of the lord struck him down because he did not give god the glory and he was eaten by worms and his and breathed his last breath but the word of god increased and multiplied and Bar barbaris and Saul returned um from jerusalem when they had accomplished and when they had completed their service bringing them to john whose other name was mark let me come right here let me come back really quick and the people were shouting the voice of a god not of man immediately the angel of the lord struck him down because he did not give god the glory and he was eaten by worms and breathed his last breath listen listen harad king harad was persecuting and killing disciples he had Peter, the disciple, locked up, planned on killing him and making a public spectacle of it. The angel of God came and woke him up. He said, get dressed, put your shoes on. Get dressed, put your, cloak, put your cloak on. Pass one officer, pass two officers. The gate opened on his own. He went home, testified of the goodness of God. Glory to God, hallelujah. He went off running because he knew they were after him. Harad then got on his high horse and instead of giving God the glory, the people are shouting, it's not a voice of man, it's a voice of God. Da 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 da. He put on his royal robes as if he was God. He ain't know who God was. But God said, don't worry about it. Since you persecuting my people and since you thank you holier than thou and since you thank you a God, let me show you who the real God is. Just like that, God killed him turned him to some worms and he breathed his last breath your enemies are around here laughing because they think they're holier than thou they think they winning something and instead of admitting god came through he freed them womp 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 y'all we got defeated on that one god got the glory whatever he went around thinking he was god he put his little robe on baby he sat on his high horse and he thought he was sitting pretty until god stepped in <laughs> until god stepped in <laughs> baby your enemies are laughing. They think that they're persecuting you. They think that they're laughing. They think they're holier than thou. They think they, they all of this, this, and that. Mm -mm. Until God steps in. The plot twist happened. The very person that was persecuting him and cast him to death end up dying himself. When you dig one ditch for God's children, you better dig two. When you dig one ditch for God's children, you better dig dig too. That same ditch you dig in, not only are you going to fall in it, but everything that was attached to you coming after me going to fall in that ditch too, baby. Because that ditch you dig it and the one over there ain't for me. And it ain't for any one of God's chosen. We will escape like a thief in the night. We will escape right in front of y'all and y'all won't even see us because God's going to give us all of the time we're supposed to have on earth. No enemy can come in and kill nothing that God has ordained. None of God's anointed. You can mean it for bad, but God's going to get the glory. You can want my head on a silver platter, but that don't mean you're going to get it. 
He wanted Peter dead. He wished Peter dead. He laughed. They were eating dinner thinking, you know, he ate his last meal. They were laughing, coking and joking, thinking it was all fun and games. And Peter was asleep. He done prayed his little prayer. He cast it at God's foot. He laid it at God's foot. He was like, God, you know, I lived a good life. I walked with Jesus. I walked on water. I did everything you told me to do. Even when, even when Jesus. I was scared, God, and after that, I came to my senses, and I started worshiping you, and I started delivering people. Even the demons knew my name, God. I still was obedient to you, God, but if this is your will for me to be, be dead, God, whatever your will is, not my will, but yours, let them do their worst. I cast all my fears at you. I believe, God, if this is what you want, I accept it, but if it's not, deliver me, oh God. Show my enemies who you are. Show them that you are a powerful God. Show them who you are. Show them that you are a God of miracle signs and wonders. Show them that you can free me just like that. Show them that you are the escape artist, God. Show them that I'm going to eat in the presence of my enemies. Show them a plot to his God. I'm going to sleep in peace because I came here in peace and I'm going to leave here in peace, God. And he went to sleep. He went to sleep. Just like Jesus was sleep on the boat while the storm was happening. He learned from Jesus. Hmm. Jesus was a great example. He could have been worried, but he had a great teacher. He walked with him. He talked with him. He knew him by name and he knew Jesus. So just like Jesus was asleep while the storm was raging, he said, I'm asleep while they partying. I'm asleep while my enemies are plotting my death. I'm going to go to sleep in peace after I lay this at your feet. But see, while he was sleeping, his brothers was praying. Mary was praying. All the disciples was praying. And they was rocking and shaking. And they was rocking and shaking. And they was making up sounds to heaven. And they was wading in the water. And they was talking to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they was talking to Moses and, Moses and Elijah. And they was talking to all of these people. And they were in there saying, God, if you can't do it, it can't be done. God, if you can't do it, it can't be done. God, if you can't do it, you can't be done. God, we know you ain't called for him to die. God, we know you ain't called for him to die. God, if he's your servant, God, do you your words. God, if you, he's your servant, show them who he is. God, sh if he's your servant, God, show him what it is. Show him that you are an escape artist, God. Show him that you are a miracle working God. Show him that you can do it, God. Show him that you are all powerful, God. Show him that you are bigger than what they think. Show him that you are bigger than your enemies. Show him that you are bigger than the enemies. Show him that you're going to get the last laugh on, Father God. Show him that you are bigger, God. Show him that you are great, God. If you are real, God, and we know you are real. We know your son. We know by his stripes you are healed. We know all of these things. We've seen the hands of Jesus. We've seen the nails, Father God. We've seen after the third day he rose. We've seen all of this. We've seen him being pierced in his side and the water came out because he was a living God. Father God, we've seen that he was a living well. We've seen it all, God. We've seen it. And while he was sleeping, they were rocking and praying. And while he was sleeping, they were rocking and praying, rocking and praying, rocking and praying. And the angel of the Lord said, we heard you. We heard you. We ain't got to do no more. You ain't got to do no more. You ain't got to do no more. You ain't got to do nothing else. All you got to do is follow my instructions. God set you free. And if God set you free, you free indeed. God said, get up, arise, put your shoes on, put your clothes on, and let's take off running. Let's take off running. Your obedience is better than sacrifice. Your obedience is better than sacrifice. Get up when God tells you to get up. Get up when God tells you to get up. Get up when God tells you to get up. Go where God tells you to go and watch what happened. He could have been disobedient. He could have laid there and thought he was going to be defeated. He could have laid there and thought, that, oh, well, woe is me. I'm about to die. I'm in prison. Ain't no way out. There's armed guards here, armed guards there. The prison palace has his big door. I don't know how I'm going to get out, but he knew who God was. And when you know who God is, it don't matter if you're facing eviction. It don't matter if you're facing a firing squad at work. It don't matter if you're facing domestic violence. It don't matter if you're one pump away from being a heroin addict. It don't matter what you are, baby. It don't matter what you are. When God is for you, no one can be against you. When God is for you, no one can be against you. Baby, you shall live and not die. You shall live and not die. Listen, the other day someone wrote me and said, woman of God, mm. <laughs> woman of God, the devil's trying to kill you. And they wrote that with full confidence. And they wrote that just thinking, I'm going to write Pastor Lindaria and tell her, the devil trying to kill you. As I chuckled reading it, I laughed because I shall live and not die. 
I should live and not die. I don't care that the devil want me dead. Do you know the devil wanted Jesus dead? And Jesus said, my time has not come. Get out of my face. Get thee behind me, Satan. My time has not come. Get up out of here. Peter facing death. Peter's like, I'm going to sleep. I know who my God is. Yeah, yeah, rah, rah, rah. Y'all going to kill me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, y'all finna kill me. Y'all don't know who my God is. I'm reading this message like, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The devil want me dead. Womp, womp, womp. Tell it to your mama because I ain't got time for it. Listen, the devil, you want what you want, but that don't mean you going to get it. You want God's people to stop worshiping God, but you ain't going to get it. Devil, you want to be God so bad, but you ain't going to be him. You want a lot of things, but you ain't going to get it. And while you around here digging a ditch, make sure you dig one for you too and your counterparts and all the cackling hens that's planning my death too. While you want me dead, make sure you get your grave site too. Make, you, make sure you have on your gravestone, here lies another hater. Make sure you write on your gravestone, here lies another hater, wishing, 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 but it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. You should live and not die. Peter went to sleep, not worrying about a thing, not worrying about a thing. Baby, what a tombstone is it so I can help you design it? Do you want it written in old English writing? Here lies another hater. Because, baby, I'm not going to die, but I'll help you write out your tombstone. Because for when you come for me, there's a plot twist, baby. When you come for me, there's a plot twist, baby. While you over here digging the ditch, baby, talking about I'm going to fall in it. Baby, what you want on your tombstone? What you want to be written? Because I got good handwriting, and I can write this really good for you. However you want it written, baby, I can write it for you. Because, baby, I'm not going to die. But I'll help you write your tombstone out. Because while you over here talk about me, what Rod Ray? Rod Ray was talking about on your tombstone where they bury you. By the river, they gonna carry you. Because we ain't dying over here, baby. We ain't dying over here. But I'll help you write it out for you. Because I'm not dying. And you not dying. And God says, touch not my anointed. And that's who we are. We got oil, God's oil dripping over us. And baby, we ain't finna die. But we can help you write how you finna if you want to die. Because when you come for me, that's what's gonna happen. Everything you touch gonna fail until you do God right by God's people. Everything you touch gonna fail. Everything. So don't come for God's children thinking we finna die. Cause baby, I can help you write out your will. I can help you write out your tombstone. Cause I'm not finna die. And while Peter was minding his business, escaping from prison, God was already plotting Hurrah's death because he know the pride comes before the um, fall. And while he was being prideful, God was planning his fall. As soon as he opened his mouth to speak. Just like that, God took him out. Baby, the pride comes before the fall. And if you don't want to give God glory, baby, he going to snatch it back. Because it's by his grace and glory that we even here anyway. Who? I got to get ready to go because I got to get on the road. But I'm going to cover y'all really quick because them enemies, baby, they going to fall in their own pit. And while they hating and while they digging, just say, what you want me to write on your tombstone, baby? Because I should live and I won't die. And all that you plotting for me, baby, that's going to happen to you. If I'm if you're not careful, baby, you're going to fall in that pit, in that pit you digging for me. You're going to fall in that pit, and I can help you write your tombstone since you don't want to leave me alone. I'm not going to die, but since you're coming after me, I can help you write out your will because I'm not going to die. I'm going to live. Now, God can, he can save anybody. He can save anybody. You can be saved, but if you keep coming for me, for real, for real, that's what's about to happen. For real, for real, I'm not finna to, but I can help you what you want to say. What you want to say? Didn't God tell you to leave his people alone? Here's an example of what happened when you mess with God's chosen. Didn't God say, touch not my anointed? I wish somebody would. Listen, what you want What you want me to say on there? We should live and not die. We are free. Don't worry about your enemies. Let them act a fool in a fool's presence. We have a bigger mission, and we will fulfill that mission. If God is for you, can nobody be against you? If God is for you, baby, can't nobody be against you. Father God, right now, whatever is coming after your children, who's ever coming after your children, or whatever demonic force or empty vessel that the devil's using, jumping in just like he did Judas, Father God, I ask right now that you reveal them and remove them. Put shields around your 